Shalom, shalom. Kahalag, Havabash, and Yahushai. To the honesty of the apostles and elders of the great millstone who rule well. And salutations to the brethren of four corners of the, of the earth, pushing the word truth and sincerity. Now, this video, I wanted to get into a, you know, a, a topic about women. Reason being is because, you know, um, there are new brothers that's, you know, asking about the topic. And, um, you know, brothers haven't, you know, encountered and, and tackled this topic before. But um, I just wanted to, you know, to say a key thing, you know, which is, you know, give not, don't give your strength unto a woman. Um, only reason being is because a woman will most likely always betray you, you know, unless these are the elect, unless she's down with the Alabashim Yahweh Shai, you know, um, treating her like she's a queen and all that and giving her, you know, all the information and letting her keep tabs on you and what you're doing and this and that, you know what I'm saying? She will almost always give you up for a state of comfortability, you know. For an example, the RFID chip, you know, what's going to happen when the RFID chip gets forced on her, you know, and she's going to be, you know, she's going to think about her and her children, she's going to give you up, you know. And that's the harsh reality that we live in, you know. Um, kingdoms have fallen, you know, because of, because of um, what kings have told their women, you know. Or what secrets they've told their women, man. You know, because the woman to go back and tell everyone else, you know. Because the woman is not the woman is not mentally strong like a man is. So you tell a woman a secret, she's almost, you know, most likely gonna blab it, you know. And a lot of lots of times, you know, love has nothing to do with it, you know. Because actually, when you go into history, when you go into scriptures, you know, women don't love men; men love women, you know. And uh, key examples: what happened to Samson, you know, because he. He uh, slipped up and he told, you know, he told a woman the source of his power and he got captured, you know, and he got killed. And that's the exact same way you have to be towards women in the, in the truth. You can't let a woman know what you're doing all the time, every day, because now she's going to start questioning you. She's going to start, you know, seeing, um, seeing you do different things and she's going to start calling you a hypocrite. She's going to start, she's going to start vexing you, you know. And I'm not saying, you know, to uh, not to not um, talk to your woman or not to, you know, love your woman, but be careful about what you tell her, be careful about what you do with her, you know, because most and more than likely they're not going to hearken on to the truth, you know. So you have to be in a mindset of, yeah, this is my woman, but she's not really with me, you know, all the way, you know, because women, they're carnal, worldly creatures, so they're always going to go with this world. So this is Proverbs 31 and 1. It says, Give not thy strength unto women, nor thy ways to that which destroyeth kings. Like, I, didn't I just say that? You know, giving your ways, your secrets, your your uh, your uh patterns, you know, unto women, man, because they destroy kings, man, you know, or even even certain friends, you know. You have to be wise in, to, you know, in who you deal with and how you deal with them, you know. This is Micah 7 and 5, says, trust ye not in a friend, put ye not confidence in a guide. You know, now this is not saying don't trust a friend, but you have to prove a friend first, you know. So you can't just go and blab your secrets to every and any and everybody, you know. You can't go and tell everybody what you do, that you're an Israelite and that you do this and that you teach this and that you believe this, you know. Put you not confidence in a guide. Keep the doors of thy mouth from her that lieth in thy bosom. And basically what that's talking about is pillow talking, man, you know. You know, I know when, when guys get drunk, they like to confide in their women and you know, and you know, they get all, you know, um, sentimental and they like to talk to their women about certain issues going on in life and, and what they're going through. But I'll tell you right now, you can't talk to a woman about what you go through in the truth, you know, because they're not going to understand, you know. The more and more you start to, you know, start to uh, come up in the truth and the more and more you abide in the spirit, you're going to learn that, that you can't tell a woman everything. There are certain things, there's a lot of things that you can't tell women. You know, because they just will not understand. That's what the brotherhood is for, you know, because we all go through the same things and we understand each other. A woman doesn't have that spiritual connection. So most of the time, that's why they're jealous of you and the brotherhood, you know. Hell, you tell a woman your secrets and she's going to devise a plan to get you away from the brotherhood, you know. To get you away from the spirit of Yahweh Shemiah Shai, you know. Hell, like I said, whole kingdoms have fallen because of kings, you know, telling their women their secrets. You know, telling their women where certain uh, treasures are, armories, and, you know, um, whole defense systems, how, you know, 
how their uh, defense, their how their king's guard is laid out, all of that, you know. And many kings have fallen because of that, you know. So you want to make sure that you're smart about what you tell the woman and how you deal with the woman, you know. And the only reason why I'm doing this video is because a lot of, you know, we got new brothers coming into the camp, and all these, you know, all the brothers have asked the same questions about this topic, you know. Now this isn't a, you know, overview on how you should deal with the woman by any means, but this is just, you know, one of the one of the many aspects that you have to think about when dealing with women, you know. This is Sirach, chapter twenty-five or fifteen, and this just shows you, you know, how wicked the woman is. Once you start reading more of these scriptures and start going on everyday life, you're going to start seeing it. And Sirach twenty-fifth chapter is a great chapter to read. This is uh, Sirach 25 and 15. There is no head above the head of a serpent, and there is no wrath above the wrath of an enemy. Now, so there's nothing more wicked than a snake, man, you know? And no and no, no, no one that's more angry than someone that hates you, you know? I had rather dwell with a lion and a dragon than to keep house with a wicked woman. Now, why did, not, why did, <laughs> why did King Solomon say that, man? You know, King Solomon's had the most experience with women ever. In the history of the world, man, he's has over, had over a thousand women, man. So he knows he can spot a wicked woman, you know, uh, from a mile away, you know. And he's probably dwelled with wicked women before, you know. Think about it. Your woman vexes you. She's always asking questions. She, she talks back to you. You know, she calls you all types of names, you know. She might call you a bitch-ass nigga every damn night, you know. She, um, when you don't do anything that she wants to do, she wants to... Uh, she wants to ruin the whole day, you know, just because she can't get her way like a child, you know. She's sleeping around with other men. It says, the wickedness of a woman changeth her face and darkeneth her countenance like sackcloth. And you can, and that's how you can see a wicked woman, man. You can see the wickedness on a woman when she walks by, man. You see that evil scowl on her face, you know. Or if you say something to a woman and they take it the wrong way and they get this evil this evil, I want to kill you look on their faces, man. You know? And I'm pretty sure you brothers have seen it. No, but pay attention to that more. Pay attention to how a woman's face looks, man. You know? Because the real way you can tell if a woman's wicked or not is if she smiles, you know? Her countenance is, her face is bright. You know? And then you got those evil, nasty women that are just, they got that them dark spots around their eyes and they're just always got their lips poked out and, and you know, and frowning. It says, her husband shall sit among his neighbors, and when he heareth it, shall sigh bitterly. <laughs> yeah, man, and what he's hearing is the woman talking shit, man. When he hears her start start having a temper tantrum, man, he's like, oh, fuck, man, I got to deal with this shit, you know? Now, mind you, you women, you brothers that have women, you know, you're going to go through this. You know, you're going to have trouble in the flesh, so you're going to hear, hear, you know, women talking shit, you know what I'm saying? You're going to hear uh, complaining. You know what I'm saying? You're going to hear begging and, you know, you're going to hear all of that. There's no way around it, you know? Like uh, Paul said, I mean, we're going to have trouble in the, fresh, in the flesh. 19, it says, all wickedness is but little to the wickedness of a woman. But let the portion of the sinner fall upon her. So so now Solomon's telling you, like, look, all this wickedness in the world, man, ain't nothing compared to the wickedness of a woman. Because you got to think about it. Going back to Genesis, the second chapter. Eve hearkened on to this onto the serpent, man. You know? She went directly and she took orders directly from the serpent, man. You think about it, these women take orders directly from Esau, you know? Directly from a serpent. You know? Because our minds are geared toward wickedness. Because they're because all a woman wants is comfortability in this world, man. And they will do anything to get it. You know? Anything and everything. They have no integrity. You know? A woman will sell you out like the drop of a dime, man. It says, as the climbing up of a sandy way is to the feet of the age, so is a wife full of words to a quiet man, you know? So, like, it's like it's so now it's comparing the, 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 the mouth of a woman to climbing up a sandy hill, man, and you're being, you being an old man, you know? It's already hard to climb up a hill with sand on it, you know, because you don't have any footing, you can't get your grip, you got to step in the same step twice, you know, and then you got to push harder. You, know, you got to find something to grab onto so you can get up the hill, you know. So just imagine if you were old, man, 70, 80 years old. You know, you can't possibly get up that hill. That's how impossible a woman is when she's trying to argue with you, man. 
you know? If you notice, when a woman starts arguing with you nowadays, I know brothers just be like, just sit there and be like, all right, okay, yep, all right, I hear you. You know, because it's, it's no use arguing with a woman, man, because she's always going to have something to say. She's always going to have some type of comeback, you know? They're not about any truth. You can tell the truth. Women claim that they want don't they want truth in a man and they want somebody honest, but then when you tell them tell them the truth and be honest with them, that they don't want to hear it, man. You know, they want to hear their truth. You know, twenty one it says stumble not the at the beauty of a woman, and aspire despi- desire her not for pleasure. You know, so it says stumble not at the beauty of a woman, man. You know, so like just because a woman walks by and she she fine as hell, man, don't. You know, don't gawk at her, man. For one, that's giving a woman too much damn attention. You know, because all these we all women are attention whores, man. You know, especially if she's fine as hell. You know, you're just giving her power. You know, don't even look at her. You know, because because her 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 looks, her body is, is her power, man. They're carnal. You know, and desire her not for pleasure. You know, because that woman to turn out to be wicked, man. <laughs> I know. I'm telling you what I know. <laughs> the woman that turned out to be a demon, man. Verse 22, it says, A woman, is she, may, a woman, if she maintaineth her husband, is full of anger and impudence and much reproach. So now you're getting into the dynamic of marriage, you know? And I was telling you, like, look, all women are wicked, you know? But then you got, okay, let's say she, let's say the woman does do what she's supposed to do and she maintains you. And let's say she got a job. Let's say you don't have a job and she's cake baking here everything. Let's say she does have a job and you have a job. And she's doing 50-50 and she's cooking and cleaning, doing all of that. And, you know, uh, taking care of the kids and all that. While you go home and work, you know, you got food uh, here on your table when you come back. She's washing the dishes, doing the laundry. You know what I'm saying? Doing everything a woman should do. But guess what? That woman is going to be full of anger, impudence, and much reproach, man. You know? You're always going to be hearing her talking shit. Well, how come How come you got the brothers over here and they don't never clean up and this and that? Or, or the brothers over here and... And they always over here all the time, and y'all never, and we don't never have time to ourselves. You know what I'm saying? So, and so that, and that's that jealousy, man, that impudence, you know. So no matter what it is, she's always gonna have something to say. She's always gonna have something to complain about, you know. And being a brother that's dealt with that, you know, I, you know, I've had my like my woman. She's been around for a while, and she, you know, used to cook and clean, and and you know, and have food ready when I come home and all that and and but deep down inside man she hated me you know because she didn't like that she had to do every do all that you know what I'm saying even though I would step in and I would I would make things fair and you know I do certain things for her she still hated me you know until this day I still think she does <laughs> to be honest but you know that's that's what you have to deal with man it's 23 it says a wicked woman abated the courage See, like I said earlier, they have no integrity, man. She abateth the courage, meaning that she gives up, man. She, when things get hard, she gives up, you know. When things really get heavy and hard and, and she gets back into a corner, she gives up, man, because you're not comfortable at that point, you know. And if a woman abateth the courage, you know, that, now she's going to spill all your secrets. She's going to tell everything that you're into. She's going to um, try to convince you to get the chip, you know. It says, making a heavy countenance and a wounded heart. A woman that will not comfort her husband in distress, making weak neat hands and feeble knees. You know, because a woman is there for comfort. You know, and if she sees you going through stuff and, you know, all she got, all she can do is just talk shit about you. You know what I'm saying? That's a wicked woman, man. That's a demon. You know, you got to get rid of that bitch. You know? Verse 24 says, of the woman came the beginning of sin, starting with Eve. She sinned first, then she tricked Adam into sinning, then fell the rest of the world, right? And through her, we all die, you know? Through her, we all die. I'm going to say it again. And through her, we all die, you know? So you hearken on to the woman, man, you're going, like, eventually you're going to get put to death, man, you know? A lot of these men out here that are following women, man, spiritually, you know, mentally, physically, you know? Women rule the world or whatever that is, you know, but all these men are being led to their deaths, man, because they're letting women lead them, you know, letting women tell them how to dress and tell them what to do and tell them what type of spirituality they should be into, you know, or they, they're jumping into Islam just because there's a fine woman that they, that they, you know, that they, um, 
if they got a thing for is it, 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 you know is Islamic, so they trying to get in their pants so they join Islam, you know, now they're going to be fit for destruction. Things like that, man. You know, you have to be you have to be stronger than the woman, even though that that feminine spirit is out and about and you know and prowling the streets, man. You have to be stronger than that, you know, because you were built stronger than them. We are the stronger vessel, you know. Not this demonic spirit, man. Because that's what exactly happened to Samson, man. He he fucked up. You know? He messed up and he, uh... And he, you know, he got tired of the woman nagging him and he gave up. He gave in to her, man. And next thing you know, the Philistines was... The Philistines were, you know, binding them hand and foot, man. You know? And she was a double agent the whole time. And women are the... And I don't know if you know, but women are the easiest, um... And the, the most um, deviceful secret weapon of Satan of all time, man. You know, whenever you need a double agent to get, you need to get to a certain man about a, you know, certain piece of information. They send that woman in there. Next thing you know, the woman seduces him, sleeping with him. You know, hell, she'll play his wife for 10, 15 years. The next thing you know, boom, troops just come in the door and wrap you up. Yeah, we got all types of evidence on you and this and that and blah blah blah. Next thing you know, you looking at your wife, she just sitting there staring at you. And you look like, what the hell? And she's like, and she got this whole sympathetic, I'm sorry look on her face. She not sorry, man. You know? Those are the type of scenarios. And, and I got that from a movie, but it's true, you know? Because it happened in the scriptures. This is Judges, the 16th chapter, verse 1. It says, Then went Samson to Gaza and saw there an harlot and went in unto her. So he saw, he saw, you know, he saw a, a prostitute, man. And he had sex with her. And it was told. The Gaz are saying, Samson has come hither, and they compassed him in and laid wait for him all night in the gate of the city, and were quiet all night, saying, In the morning when it is day, we shall kill him. So they were already on the hunt for Samson, man. You know? So he went down and he laid with the hoe, you know? And Samson lay till midnight, and arose at midnight, and took the doors of the gate of the city, and the two posts, and went away with them, bar and all, and put them upon his shoulders, and carried them up to the top of a hill. That is before Hebron. So he took the two guard posts of the city, you know, and he he, he picked them up on the shoulders. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, man. You you are of another nation and you see something like that, like how you gonna fight that? <laughs> uh, Slaki. It says, and it came to pass afterward that he loved a woman in the valley of Sorek, whose name was Delilah, and everything went downhill from here. And the Lord of the Philistines came unto her. And said unto her, Entice him, and see wherein his great strength lieth, and by what means we may prevail against him, that we may bind him to afflict him. And we will give thee every one of us eleven hundred pieces of silver. You know, so they went unto her and was like, Look, Delilah, man, look, man, we gotta get this, we gotta get this guy. Like, look, go in there and entice him, you know, that sex when do what you gotta do. Turn some tricks, do what you gotta do, you know, so we can overthrow him. And that's what she did, man. And Delilah said to Samson, Tell me, I pray thee, wherein thy great strength lieth, and wherewith thou mightest be bound to, aff to afflict thee. So she ain't, she just jumped straight to the point. She ain't even waste no time. And Samson said unto her, If they bind me with seven green withs, and were never dried, then shall I be weak and be as another man. So he was telling her lies. He was feeding her lies at first, you know, like he was supposed to do. Like, look. If they do this, I'm going to be weak. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, he wasn't going to tell her the real source of his power. Then he'd really be weak. But watch this. She wore, but but then she wore him down, man. It says, Then the Lord of the Philistines brought up to her seven green widths, which had not been dried, and she bound him with them. Now there were men lying in wait, abiding with her in the chamber. And she said unto, them, said unto him, The Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And he break the widths as a thread of tow is broken when it touches the fire. So his strength was not known. So he broke the wisdom, and, and you know they still didn't know the source of his strength. And Delilah said unto Samson, Behold, thou hast mocked me and told me lies. Now tell me, I pray thee, wherewith thou mightest be bound. So she started talking shit to him. You know, oh, you lied to me. You lied to me. Ain't nothing worse than a liar and all that blah, 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 blah. And he said unto her, If they bind me fast with new ropes that never were occupied, then shall I be weak and be as another man. Delilah therefore took new ropes and bound him therewith and said unto him, The Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And there were liars in wait 
abiding in the chamber, and he brake them off his arms like a thread. And Delilah said unto Samson, Hitherto thou hast mocked me and told me lies. Tell me wherewith thou mightest be bound. And he said unto her, If thou weavest the seven locks of my head with the web. And she fastened it with the pen, and said unto him, The Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And he awaked out of his sleep, and went away with the pen of the beam, and with the web. And she said unto him, How canst thou say I love? Now she's, now she's giving him a guilt trip, man. Oh, you really say you love me, and you just keep lying to me? How canst thou say I love thee, and thine heart is not with me? Thou hast mocked me with three times, mocked me these three times, and hast not told me wherewith thy great strength lies. And it came to pass, when she pressed him daily with her words, she urged him, so that his soul was vexed unto death. You know, so she was vexing him, man. You think the women is vexing now? You know, with all they shit talking and, and cursing at you and calling out your names and being disrespectful, you know, and doing things without your permission. The women back then were way worse. I can just imagine the type of things she was saying now, man. You know? And he was vexed unto death. That means she was really talking shit man she was really at this man it says that he told her all his heart see he told her all his heart man going back to micah 7 and 5 trust ye not in the friend put ye not confidence in the god keep thy doors of thy mouth from her that lieth in thy bosom and this is a prime example why back in judges 16 and 17 that he told her all his heart and said unto her there hath not come a razor upon mine head for i have been a nazareth unto the most high Yahweh, from my mother's womb. If I be shaven, then my strength will go from me, and I shall become weak and be like any other man. And when Delilah saw that he told her all his heart, she said, she sent and called for the Lord of the Philistines, saying, Come up with this once, for he has showed me all his heart. Then the Lord of the Philistines came up unto her and bought money in their hand, and she made him sleep on her knees. That's like, and she made him sleep on her knees. So, now, you know, she, she buttered him up. You know, you got him to spill all his heart. She probably got the man to drink or something, you know. Now she laid his head down. Come here, baby. Laid his head down on, on her knees, you know what I'm saying, and let him sleep, you know. That's a comfortable position, you know. Got him super comfortable, you know. And she made him sleep upon her knees, and she called for a man, and she caused him to shave off the seven locks of his head. And she began to afflict him, and his strength went with him. You know, so she got him super comfortable, so comfortable that he didn't even feel his head being shaved in his sleep, man. That's the wickedness of the women we are talking about. When we say when we're out on the highways and byways and we, we're reproaching and rebuking women, man, it's not because we hate women. It's because of the nasty, wicked, evil things that you that they do, man. You know? And she said, the Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And he woke out of his sleep and said, I will go out as other times before and shake myself. And he was not that the Lord was departed from him. So he didn't even know. But the Philistines took him and put out his eyes and brought him down to Gaza and bound him with feathers of brass. And he did grind in the prison house. So they cut his eyes out, man. Howbeit the hair of his head began to grow again after he was shaven. You know, so they cut out his eyes and sent him to prison, man. And bound him with chains. But his hair started growing back. Then the Lord of the Philistines gathered them together. For to offer a great sacrifice unto Dagon their God. And to rejoice. For they said our power hath delivered Samson our enemy in our hand. Now that's the extent of what I'm going to read to. Because you know you brothers get the point. But the reason why he, they were able to capture him. Is because Delilah that snake. You know that wicked woman. Offered him up man. You know. For, I don't know how many men that, you know, that came to her, whether it was 10 or 20, but, you know, 20,000, what, 30,000 pieces of silver? That was a lot of money back then. That could have been like a million dollars. You never know, you know? So, just, she took that money, man, you know? And scripture say the love, and for that reason, the love of money is the root of all evil, man. The woman will sell you out in a heartbeat to be comfortable. This is, um, First Ezra chapter 4, verse 22. It says, but this also... Ye must know that women have dominion over you. Do ye not labor and toil and give and, to, and give and bring all to the woman? Yea, a man taketh his sword and goeth his way to rob and to steal, to sail upon the sea and upon rivers. You know, so now it's saying like, look, don't you do everything you can for the woman? You, you, you work, you bring home, 
You bring home, you know, cash. You work for cash. You bring home food. You know what I'm saying? You got entertainment. Everything to keep this woman comfortable. And looketh upon a lion and goeth in the darkness. And when he has stolen, spoiled, and robbed, he bringeth it to his love. You know? Wherefore, a man loveth his wife better than father or mother. You know, because men love women. Women don't love men. They love the comfortability that men bring. Yea, many there be that have run out of their wits for women and become servants for their sakes, you know. And you see that Queen of Heaven spirit rampant all around Babylon, man, all over the world, you know. It's all about the woman. It's all about the woman is. My wife this, my wife that. Hell, you know, you be at the job and talk with some guys and, you know, you be talking about going out or whatever and then, you know, they're like, oh, yeah, we're going to be at this party or we're going to be at this bar and blah, blah, blah. Then there's always some guy in the crowd that says, Oh, well, you know, I got to I gotta get permission from the wife, you know. Ha, ha, ha. Well, I got to ask the wife. Ha, 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 ha. Well, you know, my wife would kill me if I went out and I didn't tell her, you know. That's weak. That's a weak man right there, you know. Men are supposed to be masculine. We're supposed to be alpha males, man. So, and in, in, in uh, retrospect and closing, this is the point of this whole lesson here, man. 1 Corinthians 7 and 29. But this I say. Brethren, the time is short, you know, because time is speeding up and the prophecies are rolling. It remaineth that both they that have wives be as though they had none. Now, that doesn't mean uh, forsake your wife and just leave, you know, just, just treat her like crap. She ain't there, you know what I'm saying? But it's talking about when doing this work, you treat them like they are not there, you know? When you're doing this work, don't answer the phone, you know, unless she calls you a thousand times and you have to see if it's an emergency. But, you know, you know, act like she's not even there. Hey, look, I got to go somewhere. You know, don't even tell her where you're going. You know, sometimes you can do that. Sometimes you can't. You know, it's really up to discretion and, you know, in the situation. But you have to act as though they are not there, man. Because if you focus too much on the women, you know, you will fall in the truth, man. And that's just real, you know. So I want to give all praises to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, you know. Double honors to the apostles and elders of the great millstone who are well. And salutations to the brethren on the four corners of the earth, pushing the word in truth and in sincerity. Shalom.